So Wes Brown joins us today. Thank you so much. Have you forgiven him? The Black Zambuka. Yeah, Black Look Zambuka. Sam. I was playing with him for ages and didn't even know they didn't speak. There's no way. I do not care, even though the gaffer used to play, that he could do that again. You could never work him out, do you know what I mean? If there's one player I would like to see in the summer at United, it's Harry Kane. Thank you for joining us for another episode of No Tippy Tappy Football brought to you by William Hill. Hi Sam, how's your week? Good morning, it's very good, thank you. Uh, you know, it's been very, very good, like watching the football and then stuff like that. Always, always. It's always watching always. the football. <laughs> thank goodness, it gives us things to talk about. <laughs> uh, would you like to introduce us to, our, uh, introduce everybody to us? Yes, it's, it's my pleasure today to introduce somebody I've known uh, very well for, for a long time, a fantastic career. Uh, in football, and uh, I was lucky enough to to meet him uh, when I was manager of Sunderland. Um, I think, uh, sadly, sadly for for me and for him, I hope he forgave me because I didn't play him quite as much as he wanted at that particular time. But uh, we managed to survive on what was a what was a a great journey, like you know. So, uh, Wes, thank you very much for coming. It's a pleasure, pleasure. I thought you was going to say, I only met him when he was very old, Dad. <laughs> oh, no. I would have took that, boss. <laughs> so, Wes Brown joins us today. Thank you so much. Have you forgiven him? 100%, yeah. There you go. What was it like? Tell me about the time when you were at Sunderland together. It was good. I mean, it was always sort of a difficult part of my career, Sunderland, because we was always struggling um, you know, to get the performances in. We was, we was always at the bottom of the league or thereabouts, so... Um, as as the boss will know, it was it's a difficult time. You have to get everybody on your side, everybody up for every game, um, and you just have to battle wins out. So it was it was difficult, but I mean, we the boss came in and, and we did it again. So um, I was there for support, basically. It was to work. It was well. I thought was to work, Sam. You know, in all fairness, really difficult for me because of each. It, it, I know he, how how he might take it, like you mean because. Such a great, great professional, and a great career, and then all of a sudden you're not, you're not as a manager, you're not selecting him as much as definitely he would like, or he probably would feel that he should or deserve to get picked. But the way he handled it and the way, the way he took it was like, you know, so so good in terms of not not causing me any distractions or any more problems. Like I mean, so you know, it was from that point of view extremely professional. Like I mean, so. Managed to give me the odd day off here and there to get back to give me to give me an odd day off, and I actually joined you a few times in the evening. I know, yeah, which was good. Yeah, so I remember our plane journey from Norwich. Remember yeah. that? Yeah. Oh, tell us. Well, well, I got this this cancer research do that I performed in it most most years. Then, like, I used to make a fool of myself on the stage, but I had to get back for that cancer research do. So uh, I had a private jet after the game. So. Uh, I said to Wes, look, listen, if you want to jump on it after the game and get you back to Manchester, see your family as quick as you can, you're more than welcome. And then I'll see you see you Tuesday. And I think we thrashed Norwich, didn't we? We did, yeah. Three. And uh, got us out in the bottom three. And um, uh, the lads were rewarded by a few days off, like I used to do. And uh, and we came back and enjoyed our weekend. Certainly, I enjoyed my weekend. <laughs> the only thing is, I can't remember what I did at Cancer Research that year. Like, you know, but I did what sort of things did you do? All sorts and, and Michael Jackson, John Travolta. Thinking? Yeah, uh, no, my bit. Okay. Doing the action, you know what I mean? Doing all that. Any of these? You know, so uh, yeah, I've done I've done quite done quite a few and uh, did Peter K once with Sammy Lee. Yeah, this is the way to Amarillo, and uh, you know, yeah, I did it for about twenty years or so. Like you I mean, so it's Amazing. good. It's good. We raised a lot of money um, for cancer research and. Uh, Obviously, don't I don't perform now like we used to, but there used to be a group of us, group events. Uh, Phil Brand did it with me for 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 a while as well, so it was it was a really great night and uh, raising money for uh, obviously the the right causes, you know. So oh, we need to get you out of retirement, Sam. No, 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 you can't get me out there now. We, used to, <laughs> we do a lot. Of, we used to quite a bit of practice and stuff. Got all the got all the game. My wife used to do it with the girls and all that, you know, and uh, still going now. The young ones have taken over now. I'm glad oh. to say, all our all our siblings have come along and started entertaining us, so we can relax a bit more. But you know, a couple of shots of Zambuca before he went on. Gonna say Zambuca. Yeah, a few, few shots, you'd be alright. Few shots. 
the black one. The black Zambuka. Yeah, black Zambuka. Sam. Yeah, it's settled, oh, cool. settled your nerves slightly. You were telling me before that you're both doing a charity event together soon as well, another one, but not singing, not No, performing. I mean, this started last year for the first time. It was actually done at Manchester City's Academy, so uh, the, the couple of lads from the Fire Brigade have started this uh, charity game, um, Celebs versus Legends, and it's on the 7th of May at Boundary Park at Oldham Athletic this year, and, uh, and it's for, you know, Manchester remembers. For the, for the fire that was at uh, the Manchester Arena and the and the survivors that need help, so uh, we you look for we look forward. To, I'm managing the the the, the legends. Okay, are you playing? Yeah, yeah, you. Yeah. Is he going to play you this time? Oh yeah, yeah. he's all the time now. <laughs> we battered the celebs last year. We really remember. I, I, I he's he's you managing the, the the celebs, so uh, it's a big. There's a big. It's it's a growing list now. I'm glad to yeah, say it is of. Uh, People that want to participate, like in the in the game, you know. So, so and the party after somewhere in Manchester and after. So. I watched it last year. It was fab. What, yeah. what a great cause. Um, well, so I wanted to ask you. We've had a lot of former players that have played under Sam on the podcast, and I notice that the, that he's, he's still refer to you're referring to Sam as boss. Yeah. We've had other players that come on and they still refer to him as gaffer. And is that just inbred in you now? Like, is that will will it, he forever be boss to you? Yeah, for me, it's more a respect thing. You know, he has been my manager um, so yeah I would always say boss even gaffer depending even though I, I see him probably more than anyone to be fair <laughs> out of out of my ex-managers um, but yeah I, I like it as well I think it's good and he knows I'm not taking the piss so do you like it? Uh, yeah I don't mind at all I mean I'm, I'm, I'm listen when I'm not the manager if they want to call me anything uh, we could call him a few other names. But <laughs> we've always waited that. that. <laughs> well, I set myself up for that one, didn't I? Yeah, yeah but yeah, generally that that goes across the board. I'm sure I'm glad to say that he, you know, yours um, appreciates a sign of respect. And they, so you've worked under some incredible managers, obviously, all that time under Sir Alex as well. How would Sam and Sir Alex's management styles compare or contrast? I, yeah, I mean, obviously, it's a little bit different. I think with the, with the manager, you know, he's always had a built a really good you know squad over maximum years you know he's been there a long time um so once he's got his squad together you know few go few more come in um, and i was lucky enough to be part of that as a very at a very young age do you know what i mean so you can see it but similar i mean there's there's so much respect there between players and manager um you know it's I would say the same, and I know you're not as old as Sir Alec, but it's the same sort of, you know, style in that way, um, how they get things across to players. Um, you know, players understand it, they get it, you know, whether it's good or bad, it, they take it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's for me, it's all about a respect thing and how the manager gets what he wants across to the to the players, and, and Sam does that perfectly. Um, I did like the way he, when he first came, came in, and you had that, you had them blocks, boss. Yeah, games. I thought that was unbelievable. Yeah. And I've never seen that before. Yeah. What, what game? It's, we blocked the games. Yeah. You feel this too. No, no. So, yeah. obviously, you normally, we're struggling, you know, when there's, you're looking at the games ahead and you're thinking, right, all right, we've got Norwich, um, Liverpool, you're going Newcastle. And then you might have a couple of easier ones on paper, as you always do. Um, but, when the boss came and he blocked him out into to sections, I don't know what it was the full season. Was it three parts? I think it was. Uh, I think it was in eight. Eight eight parts, right? Yeah. Okay. So we'd block like six games out, and you, you you just sort of work on them. Um, obviously, you take the first one, and then you you want a, a max. Try and get a maximum or minimum points from them games, and I thought that was very interesting because that was good mentally. I thought because yeah. we was in such a a bad headspace as well at the time. There's only nine games in. Nine games, uh, yeah. But and, I, I and know the three that, I don't know, I know that we stuck to it, but we were close. Yeah. On on most of the yeah, set. We, we, we stuck to it mo, mo, most of the time. Like I mean, in fact, nearly all, all the way through. But I mean, the beauty was it for me is getting a, getting a spell over. There's a there's a group of games where you would expect that the difficulty of the games would be. A bonus if you got a certain amount of points, but every our least our least target was 
the same amount of points per game. But then when we're playing in, because when you're bottom of the league, the most important thing is playing against the bottom eight, and don't lose, don't lose against the bottom eight. Just trying to put that to the lads. Like I mean, there's never going to be a problem about how the lads play and the effort that they give when they're playing the top boys. But you can still play your best game, still give your best effort, and still lose yeah. and lose comfortably. So, so if you do as a result, well, that's a bonus. So it's bottom eight, going to get us out, out, out the trouble. If we if we pick up, you know, when we play them on with away, pick up four points, you know, then we're, we're, we're riding in the right direction. There's no motivation needed when you're playing Liverpool, Man United, Man City, Arsenal. Players naturally are going out to try and perform at their very best and try and upset upset one of the big boys, which, which on... In confidence terms, it was unbelievable for me because we we got to Christmas and we made some signings, some very important signings at the time, and then we we lost one in the last eleven. Don't really remember that. So so it shows you where where we we come from, and even even losing only one in the last eleven. We had to wait till um, Everton at home on a Wednesday night, because Everton was our last our last home game, and Watford away was our last game. But we still had to beat Everton to stay up. It was tough, and I had, I had that for five years. But I know I said every time I some of the money, every, and, yeah. they, I, and then a new manager would come in and save, and then really, so I mean our la our last week was. But we beat Chelsea at home two one. Yeah, that that was a uh, that was a good one. But we always stepped up against, like you said, now. the the big teams. We sort of stepped up a bit, um, but we could never get a run going really, a proper run where you know we're scoring. Which, yes, you know it was always a problem. Uh, but ultimately, we we got out of it. So we're lucky we had Jermaine Defoe. To be fair, did because they told me Jermaine Jermaine Defoe couldn't play up front on his own. Um, he don't like it, yeah. And uh, he'd been put out on the wing, and he didn't like that. Like I mean, so, so I asked him. I said, "What's it, what's it like playing up front on your own? Do you mind?" And I don't know from Yeah, it's very cool. Yeah, he says just get me the ball, just give me the ball in the box when you can, and I'll score. That's all. You know, I'm interested in. So we built, we built the fact, we built our tactics around the fact that how, how often can we get Jim in the phone in the box with the ball? And said, "Don't particularly worry too much about the build-up." You know, and, and when he was, just, you know, I'm I'm concentrating on clean sheets, stopping the balls going in the back of the net, which is trying to be. He's a natural goal scorer, so we provide him with the service. You know, you're going to get enough goals. So I mean, it's no mean feat scoring 18 goals in a side that never, never got out the bottom five. Yeah, I think without him, we would have struggled. Yeah. So it was. Um... You know, he was always confident as well because, I mean, no one likes it when you're down there, but you just got on with it, didn't you? Uh, I, th I think we got him from Toronto. I think it was a straight swap with, um, who was it with? Altidore. Yeah, Gabriel okay, brought him back, yeah. That was it. Jermaine right. wanted to come back, so the club did well, to be fair, to, to get hold of him. Yeah. And, you know, he, he got some important goals in the end. Well, you always speak so fondly of him on this on this podcast. We, we've got to try and get him on one. Day. JD, he's so he's he's top. Top. Yeah, he's top. He's doing his own podcast, isn't he? I think we've been, so we so we'd have to try and get him up. But but I mean, he he, I rang him up. He was in America. He came all the way back to play soccer head for us because we were short of a short of a player for the for the legends. You know what I mean? So you know, I have so much respect for him, and and I think that uh, you know his career says it all. Scored goals wherever he went, like you know, and was he thirty six when he when he hung his boots up, like I mean, but uh, yeah, no, in, you know, meeting him was a you know was a real a real bonus at Sunderland for me, you know, and uh, and of course, um, I think we, in in the end, it's hard to describe what what I mean. I don't know you describe it because you won the league, haven't you? 
It's like you won the league and all that. What's it feel like when you when, you, when the fans go like they're mad when they when they know you've stayed up? Like you mean? They... Yeah, it's difficult for me that bit because I can't celebrate. That. No, and you think that what well, we're only just staying up while you celebrate? Well, ultimately, it was a good experience when I look back now because I've seen both sides of it. Um, so top and bottom, where we've had to battle, and I've you know luckily we didn't go down with Sunderland. We we was okay. Um, but yeah, it was a good experience. It, it, I think it helps a lot going forward. But ultimately, it's not something you want to be doing every season. And we we was in that every season, basically. It's not a nice feeling. It's different when you go home. You know, you can't chill out. We can't. You just you're always thinking about where we're getting the next three points from. So it's a little bit different, but it's the same. If you know what I mean, because you could be first, you could be second in the league, and you you get beat. What what gets you back into the you know, I don't know, first position or back on track. And when we was at United, if we, it's going to sound so pathetic, but if we come second or third, that's that's not good enough. enough yeah. So you, your holidays would be rubbish. You know, you come back and, and that's just the way we were as kids and that's the way we got brought up. That's an intense pressure for you though. Like, so for, throughout your entire career, you were only essentially celebrating the times when you won the league. 100%. Yeah, but I mean, we, we were probably in summit most years, whether it was a cup, a cup, um, but if we didn't win the league and do well um, in anything else, and it's that's why a lot of players the fail. Standard is uh, Man United or no Manchester City because they can't cope with the pressure of keep winning. Yeah. Never mind coping with the pressure of losing all the time. It's a couple. It's, the op- it's an opposite when you look at the psychology of it. The the demand, the demand. That, I mean, Sir Ali said to me, like, you lose two games on the trot, man, you know, it's a disaster. And he, yeah, and we can't lose three. Wow, the mentality there. We cannot lose three, you know what I mean? So, so you know, that, but that's but that's born and bred on on a unique um, build. That has, man, United have struggled to cope with since he left. That infrastructure has fallen apart, and somebody's tried to build a new infrastructure three or four times and failed. Even with top managers, Louis Van Gaal or Jose Mourinho. I think the mentality that you're talking about is so so interesting, and I imagine growing up playing under Sir Alex, the mentality was was instilled in 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 all of you. But is there, was there any any times where you had a run in with him? Because I bet that is <laughs> scary. By the way, yeah. <laughs> There was, a, there was a few. I mean, I was there since I was 13. So, obviously, that's my whole teenage life, my young adult life. So, there was definitely a few nights out in there where he's probably got me in. I always, I always remember you used to say to me, he'd got me in a few times, so he stopped going out. And then I go, right, okay. And then they go, have you got a girlfriend yet? And they're like, oh, how do you want me to do that? He keeps telling me not to go out. So, you could never work him out, do you know what I mean? But I know, obviously, when you get older, you sort of know what what's happening, but uh, he, he was absolutely fine with me. I mean, obviously there was times when he he, he I got you know a good telling off in general. Was but it scary? It always was, I think, as a as a young kid, it always was. Um, but as you get a bit older, you realise he's just helping you, and that's as simple as that. Uh, to be fair, I'm not I'm not a bad guy in that sort of way. So he he just sort of made me understand. Um, you know what I should be doing, what I shouldn't be doing. So, I, I always remember when he's told me to move, and he's told me to move to like sort of elderly, sort of that. When I was like, "Boss, I've never heard of that before in my life. Don't even know where that is." Do you know what I mean? And he looked at me, he genuinely like, "Are you taking the, the mitten?" Yeah. But I actually wasn't. So, he he was fine with me, and he uh, he helped me out loads of times. To be fair, because you grew up in um, you were at Fletcher Moss, same as uh, Rashford was as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, is that how much of a priority is it for Rashford to, to get a new deal, stay at United for them to to really build around him? Yeah, I think it'll happen. I think obviously these they take time now, don't they? I mean, he's a he's the star of the team, and you know you want to keep him there. But I just think there'd be lots of details in there that you know both parties need to be happy with. But I'm pretty sure he'll he'll stay at Man United um, in the near future. Run from Arsenal, turn around. Yeah, crazy. Because it, 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 I was very fearful the man, you know, where where his career was going football-wise. Off-the-field stuff was 
remarkable what he did and how he and how he went about it. And, and then there were a lot of people said that that it's put him off his game. I, I'd like him to come out and say, and hope it didn't. That which something else happens. So something things do happen in your career where you, you lose your confidence or you don't look very happy. And a lot of time he looked he looked extremely body language, which is what you look at as a manager, was. You could see it was, wasn't right. You didn't have to talk to him to know that he wasn't very happy. And then all of a sudden, I mean, what is he at now? 27, 28 goals this year? I know. I don't know if he's ever got. Has he ever got past 20 before? I'm not sure. sure. Oh, no. From the end, but this time round, I mean, and, he, and he's, he's been moved around, plays on the, white, on the right, then goes down the middle and scores. I've never seen him score so many goals with his head. You know, I mean, you know, you know, well, phenomenal. To so, yeah, so he's done, and I just hope he stays at Manchester United and and continues in in the same vein because you know he's he's you know one of our own players who's brought up at, through down the road and there's not enough of those, you know. How important do you think that was that your connect your connection with the club, you know, being a, a man clad, a local man clad, and there was a few of you at that time as well. How important was that to your development connection at the club and? What do you mean, homegrown? Yeah. Um, well, it's funny as, as a kid, you just I used mean, to play right wing. Boss, to be fair. Sonny, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't. <laughs> no, yeah, I don't. He's laughing. <laughs> I was actually fast one. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was funny is I was um, a, a little bit lucky. I mean, Fletcher Moss was still even then at that early stage. We're talking ninety two, ninety three, ninety four. You know, there was no, wasn't really grassroots. It was just, it was basically Sunday league. Sunday league. You didn't train. You just turned up on a Sunday, and you and you played. There was no other coaching, and um, so we were just, you know, pretty raw. We just used to put our jumpers down like anyone else would round our way and and play a game. And then it was only because of my mate um, called Leon Mills and Richard Wellings, who played for Collier. They were both at United. Mm-hmm. They they were just playing Sunday league. I don't know, two years before me. Um, so, yeah, they just said, come down and play. And like I said, I used to play right wing until the centre-back got was ill. So they, so they asked you to come down and start training at Man U? No, no, Fl- no. Fletcher Moss. All oh, right. So I got you, who, who scouted you Matt, to go to Man U? So that was Nobby. Nobby, well, I know. Nobby Styles. Nobby Styles came on watching Sunday football and then went and... Yeah, I don't know what happened. If I'm, if I'm, if I'm right, I mean, my dad's not here now, but... Someone seen me and told Nobby, and then Nobby came and watched. But it was funny in, a, in like a four week period, Oldham wanted to sign me. This has probably been probably there for two years, by the way. This and then I st- went to centre back. Um, Oldham wanted to sign me. I went for trials at City. They didn't want me. And a week later, I went to Sunderland with Nobby, and he was like, "You're not signing with anyone, son." You know what he's like. Well, what he was like, Nobby. And I was like, "No." And he said, "Right, you're signing with us," and that was it, really. That was 13. Um, I'm thinking about the, the dressing room, what it must have been like back then. Some of the names that you played with and some of the names that were in that dressing room with you. I mean, Gary Neville, Roy Keane, they've gone on to be like two of the, well, two of the big, I'll give you two of the biggest pundits around. Yeah. What were they like in the dressing room? What Did, did you always imagine I mean, management, punditry might be something for them? Or what were they like? If you look back, Gary didn't shut up. If I'm being quite honest, but Gary was Gary was funny, and he still is funny to me. Do you know what I mean? Uh, he would never shut up. It didn't matter what he was about; he'd be involved in everything. To be fair, and he's not changed. Um, Kino, Kino is listen. If you're playing well and doing well, Kino's ledge like anybody else. But listen, he's not your best mate. He, he's the captain of the team. You respect that, and if anything, you follow his his lead. So. Um, if, if out of both of them, I wouldn't. You never would have thought maybe Keno would have maybe ended up where he is. But ultimately, he's not changed anything. He's not changed his character. He's the same character, and his expectations are always high, like it, you, you've seen on the telly. We hope you're enjoying watching No Tippy Tappy Football brought to you by William Hill. And don't forget, you need to subscribe to the Footy Accumulators YouTube channel so you never miss an episode. Have Man United missed a Roy Keane type captain in recent years? I think every team. I mean, the, the only team, the only two I can remember, as in my playing time, is is probably someone like a Tony Adams, a, a Roy Keane. Um, I'm just going off captains. I mean, you know that. Robbo. Robbo. I said my time. 
Come on, Robo. No, Robo's not listening. No, no Robo, no. Time. No, no, Robo, Robo will be fine with that. But yeah, I mean, I, I'm just trying to think of people who I've seen or have played under, and honestly, they're very rare. You don't, you go, you don't get them often. Um, Vincent Company for me. Vincent Company will be. Yeah, that that's correct. Yeah. Um, even probably a, a John Terry sort of yeah. type. You know, but they don't come all the time, and that's the truth. So, um, I was lucky to. To, to know a few and play under a few and hundred percent they get better out of the team, one hundred percent. But you know, the, it's, the, I think there's not many in the game at this point. I like to ask players when they come on: Is there anybody that you nearly signed for that you didn't, that nobody knows about, that you can tell us about? Because we do love a scoop. I'm saying no. The only thing I remember um, was maybe Lazio, and that's only because I had a whiff whiff of some at once. And the manager said to me, but he didn't give me any details, as you would know. No. He made sure I was yeah. We never did those sorts of things then. I sort of, yeah. You just sort of, uh, you must have just brushed it aside and then I, I maybe signed another contract maybe a year down the line. But That's probably why you got a new one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look. It's been good. Right. Well, I was coming for Wes. Get him a new contract. <laughs> <laughs> no. I had no desire, to be fair. Regardless, Indians, Man United. Yeah, I didn't. I was at, I was local, you know, playing for the team I've always supported. So that was it never really crossed my mind at all. And you were playing, as we've already said, with some of the greatest players the game has seen. What was it like training with Ronaldo every day? Did that make you a better player? And like, if you were going up against him, it's funny how you say that because I used to pick him up. So, so was he's one of the young lads. I know that sounds really stupid to some people, and they don't understand it. But we knew he was a great lad and great player. Um, but he, he would keep you sharp in training, and the best thing it is when you work it out. Really, if you you know if you're marking him, Nani Giggsy, um, even Valencia a bit later on. I know he ended up at right back. You're marking you know some of the best players in the Premier League. So you go out on a Saturday, no, no one's good as them. no one's as good as them. So it's it's a bonus, it, and people don't really understand that or get it. But um, training was you know it was intense, it was difficult, but ultimately. On the Saturday, you'd be ready for pretty much anything because you've trained, you're training with them, and that's the truth. Yeah, it's got, yeah, I could mm. totally see that. Did you, um, how old were you in terms of David Beckham? Did you train with him, play with him? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're uh, class of 92. I'm, if you want to put it in classes, 96, so four years. It's wow. really, you really are old? Yeah, I didn't know you that. But you're going to say, but I'm younger. No, oh, it's good <laughs> way. <laughs> so four years, yeah. Were you there then for the famous Fergie Beckham boot in the changing room oh, yeah. incident? Yeah. I don't think you could forget that one. Can you tell us anything about it? Do you know what? Ultimately, I don't care what anyone says. <clears throat> you remember the, the dressing room? I know it's a bit bigger now and mm. they've knocked it down and, and made their way one into the home. There's no way... I do not care, even though the gaffer used to play, that he could do that again and hit that per He could have hit any of them. And you have to bear in mind, he, he, that wasn't straight away. He was throwing bins, he was kicking, you know, stuff was coming up, tables, and then, yeah, the boot. He did, um, is it a great shot, is that what you said? Fantastic shot. I mean, to do it again. It was a the, the thing was, not because we, because we got beat and... Um, a lot of us had our heads down, you know, so you, yeah. you know, you're there like that. Yeah. And he's just kicked it and it's just hit him. And, you know, what? no, he wasn't looking, hit him. And that was it. For the, well, he apologised straight away. Well, be first. Let's try to make it. Yeah, because obviously they make it as his aim. You can, it's just gaff his aim. Have you seen him play in a circle game in the morning? No, the gaff and can't. He's not getting that on there on pinpoint. There's no... <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it could have hit anyone, could have hit no one, but it did, it hit Betcher. Yeah. So I was a bit, yeah, it wasn't the best thing that could happen in the change room. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, you know, I think as you get older, cause I was only still young then, you realise that, um, you know, not everyone's best of friends in football. No, and, that, and, that, no. and that's the truth. I think growing up, you just think everyone gets on. And, and whatsoever. I think the first time I realised it was with Andy Cole and Teddy Sheridan. I was playing with them for ages and didn't even know they didn't speak. Yeah. For instance, for whatever reasons, um, which meant nothing on the pitch. You know, you just you get on with it. 
Yeah, but ultimately off the pitch, they didn't. They just didn't get on. But they could work together, and that was yeah. all. Yeah, yeah, and that was all that mattered. Yeah. I wanted to ask you some uh, questions, England quite related questions as well. Um, Joey Barton recently said, and, and man, another man you'll have played with, that Wayne Rooney was levels above Harry Kane. Obviously, Harry Kane breaking the England scoring level lately. What do you make of that? And I'll ask you as well. I think just different. I mean, Wayne, um, Harry Kane's a. I would say natural goal scorer. I mean, we've seen any position he sort of gets in around that box. He's there for any tapping, he's in the right spot. Um, he's not many better. Now, Wayne different is completely different. You could play, first of all, you could play Wayne any position on the pitch. Anywhere, yeah. Um, the way you would work for the team, you know, he's assist. He probably likes assisting more than actually scoring. You can probably ask him that. Um, you know, he's someone that'll get you started if you, you know, if there's a little bit of a drought. You'll be the first one sprinting, tackling, you know, winning the ball, you know, trying to make us get to get going again. Completely different. Um, so, I get what I get what I get what Joey's saying. I mean, it's it's a bit harsh to say levels above, but Wayne is, you know, pretty much nearly a finish article as you would want as any manager. And um, his work rate is just the way he would try to sit. And his goals going. I mean, Wayne, he could score from anywhere, and that's the truth. And his attitude um, to to playing football. So it's it's a little bit different. I get what he's saying, but Joey does, you know, say some extreme things. But you, that you can never disrespect Harry Kane like that because um, I mean, if there's one player I would like to see in the summer at United, it's Harry Kane. I would hate it if United signed Harry Kane in the summer. I think we've got more chance than you. Um, yeah, we don't need him. We don't need him now. We don't need him. I think he'd be just an insane fit for you. I think he'd really take you to the next, back up yeah, to. He's someone we need. Oh, someone to help. Like, just that. It's just that bit that we can't seem to get right at the moment. Um, and you do want someone who's scoring goals on a week in week out. And he, and yeah, Harry Kane does that. What do you think, Sam? Rooney or Kane? Different. Well, they are different. Like, I mean, I think in the, in the, they're, they're an equal. I mean, I know the different players are an equal in what, what they are. Perhaps in Wayne and a little bit more, more versatility than Harry. You know, um, two good captains. And you know, we're talking about where are they? Characters, both of them. I mean, um, obviously, I know Wayne better than 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 Harry. In a short time with him. At England, but definitely, definitely top top quality players, and and a shortage in this country of of what we're developing. We want to develop more of them, more. But you see, I would say that that you know Wayne had that, you know, sort of bit more. I don't know about Harry's upbringing, but a bit more rough and ready upbringing, which gave him a a personality, a tough personality, because had a bit of a tough upbringing. And because of that tough personality, the character was already there, and that's why he played at 16. Because he, he was good enough mentally, never mind physically, because mental's a big thing, like, I mean, you know, so if we had to get younger players into, into, the, into the team as early as possible, then the character that they're brought up with is, is through their life makes a massive difference on the desire and 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 so on and so forth. So, uh, so we, you know, I'd li I'd like to see uh, more. Uh, m I think we've done we're doing better, but I do think academies are uh, uh, training players and knocking out the character. We need to have the character. We need to, you need to have a bust up. You know, if a kid has a bust up or has a disargument or has a shout, you know, they they get shot down discipline put so it, it's character building to be criticized and then and all right you'll say criticism can go two ways go too far too much but without criticism you can't you can't develop mm -hmm. you know what i mean and take the criticism for what it is and hopefully you're going to get more constructive criticism than you are anything other any other type but there's there's um the effect of the, the effect of the dressing room going exploded would happen rarely at Manchester United. Rare, you know why? Because if it kept happening too much, it would have little effect. And there we go. 
Well, here he goes again. Because players are not, they have to go, oh, you know, what's he doing again? Yeah. So, you know, there's a time and there's a place and then there's a reaction. Yeah. And, uh, and and that reaction is is what you believe in as as, as the manager and, and responsibility to get your players back on track and, and winning. So, going talking about two captains, talking about a Harry captain, yeah. I want to talk about another Harry captain. Um, obviously, Harry Maguire continues to play for England, but not really Manchester United. Do you think he needs to leave in the summer for his for his own career, or do you think he'll yeah. need to try and back it, out? It's, it's a tough one. Harry's in a, a situation now where the, the the managers come in and he's he's not played as much. You know, it doesn't look like he will be the you know in the starting eleven when everybody's fit. Um, so it's a decision Harry has to make. I mean. Um, it's a little bit different to my last season. I was very old, like Man United, but you know you're very like, old. You were never very old yeah. as you played. Yeah, about 30, 31. for Man United. You can't. That's not old. Yeah, but we made it. We made your knees. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. 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 knees were probably forty. Yeah. yeah, but you have the conversation with the manager. Yeah, the manager true. says, "Listen, I want you to stay. Um, you've got a year left. You won't be playing as much." Um, but you know we still need you. We need you at time, and and when you, you know, some anything could happen, and you could be in, you could be back in. You never know. Um, so you, you you know, I I just hope that he has them sort of conversations with the manager, and everyone's honest because I think Harry does need to play, and he's had a lot of stick, and you know he's 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 not as bad a player as as everybody thinks, and always plays well for England. He, yeah, he does, he does. Um, but yeah, he's 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 come under. Um, you know, a lot of stick the the last couple of seasons, and I think he's he's handled it quite well. Um, sometimes you get to the to the point where it comes a little bit, you know, too much. But this is the today's age; you have to be able to handle it. And I think I think he can do that absolutely fine. But ultimately, he'd be disappointed he's not played as much. It's as simple as that. Um, but the manager's gone with different people, so. Um, you know, he, personally, he'll have to look at it. I'm sure the manager will want him to stay, and that's the truth. Um, but he'll, it's up to him whether you know he he's going to play more or not, and and then it's his his decision. So um, it, it's a tough one. I mean, no one no one wants to leave Man United. I can tell you once they're there. Um, so it'll be it'll be a difficult decision. Um, but like you said, he, I've also seen where things turn around and you get straight back in. You know, football is a crazy game, like that but. Ultimately, you know, I think Harry um, will will sit down um, in the summer with his people and, and and maybe the club and have some, you know, some big words and and you know they can maybe talk it out and see what happens from there. But it's a decision that um, I'm, I'm guessing will be up to Harry. His uh, premier, his uh, his uh, professionalism is remarkable in today's age. Came to just peep out of him headlines, causing trouble. Um, creating problems for the for the manager, um, but if he doesn't get away, it deteriorates, and then that will then ultimately do a brilliant job for England. Continue to do. Gareth has huge amounts of faith in him, and he's repaid that faith by not playing for Manchester United, but still playing at the very top level, international level. But sooner or later, he'll lose his England place if he doesn't start playing first-team football on a more regular basis. So uh, the, the only problem for for Harry is, is you know, he, he, he can, it's all right him saying, I want to get away. Um, but it's what Manchester United will accept. Uh, 85 million, I think it was, was it? At, uh, at the time. And uh, as to the, over the, over the, Time he's been there, consistent, perform well. Everybody has a everybody has an off spell. It's up to the manager and everybody else around him to reinstall his confidence and and get him back to what he was. Because he's he, he, in his competition, in my view, he's as good as any of the two centre halves that's playing now. So it, it's it's it, they're not way ahead of him, in my opinion, and uh, and and of course. He can do he can do both things, perhaps a little bit of lack of pace, but he can do both things. He defends well, and if you want him playing out of the back, there's not that many, but as good as him's playing out from the back. So he's, he's got it all, but the manager just just not 
if he's just not his type, then you know he should he should let it he should let it happen before Harry and his agents sit down and say, "Well, we'll only get away if we cause cause a fuss or cause a problem." You know, you know what I mean? You don't really want that, but sometimes it's necessary, as we saw with Ronaldo. You know, for that, and Ronaldo and Manchester United particularly are better off for that situation being drawn to a conclusion. You know. So we like to finish the podcast. We've renamed it the Not So Quick Not So Quick questions. Fire Questions. It was Quick Fire Questions, but we realised um, they never are that quick. So answer them in your own speed. Um, so, best teammate you've ever played with? Ryan Giggs. Any teammate that was better in training than on match days? <laughs> Lots of ways. That stick, that's not, I mean, <laughs> I, I'd probably say me. Because in training, I never used to tackle. I used to try and, uh, can't say hurt people, can I? <laughs> I, I, I try and win the ball, but very aggressively. So I wouldn't tackle someone how I would tackle on the game. Whereas a lot of other players would like Keen or Vidic, they would, they would do it normal. I would never do that because I wouldn't want anyone to get injured. Worst dressed teammate. We've <laughs> <laughs> got that many to choose from. We don't know. It's got that many to choose from. Who can I say for that? I mean, I would always pick Tom Kushak, but I'm trying to think of someone else as well. Who really tried? Rescue's for only minute, some first place to play, you worst just what, player. Ronaldo at the beginning wasn't the best. I'm telling you right now, he come, his first day was some weird jumper he had on. <laughs> <laughs> jumper. Yeah. You actually see it if you've ever watched um, his first day arriving, because I was in there. Um, Did you think, what's this kid got on? I just thought he'd some obviously a, a family member is near that down he, somewhere he used to get, he used to get hung up on a coat hanger you know? yeah I did yeah that, that was still a thing yeah, uh, yeah. then it was be hung up you know you come in after training and somebody sneaked him the coat hanger and hung it up and oh. go you know that's minging <laughs> <laughs> oh I thought you meant nicely like looking at <laughs> no after not it. nicely no it's, this, is, is this the worst pair of yeah, or the worst shirt. I'd say, say he wasn't the best dresser, Fletch, Darren Fletcher. Very basic Scottish, you know, sort of time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Scottish style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like it. Everything's a bit baggy. <laughs> Did you ever see him in a kilt? No. Picture, but not that's the scene. <laughs> Can you think of any of your, your players that were... Who well, I played with? Worst, or, or that you managed worst... worst managed, through. it had to be Tom Davis at Everton, didn't it? You know, I saw I saw some of the weird gear that he had. Up. He's so unique in terms of what he used to dress himself with, like unique the life. I would like to mean so. Uh, <laughs> I love that. That was a bit. <laughs> Go on, Tom. Had his own style. Strangest superstitions you've seen from a play. It's just basic stuff. The strangest one. Um, I think the boss will be. Bear with that one. I never. When it got to that point, you just in your own little zone. Yeah, no. zone there, yeah. Managing, yeah. managing. You'd see a few. If you want to know more about the superstitions, you just ask the kit man. Oh, okay. kit man, they tell you what what yeah. socks have to be put out the right way, what boots it'd have to be. Matty, Matty Taylor, uh, West Ham, had, had like run out, do a warm up, come in sweating, take his entire strappings off, and then re re-strap his entire feet to put his boots back on and go back out again and I thought I mean I used to use a lot of strappings myself like you mean but yeah you re-strap like you mean you, 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 you go out and warm up and you, you, you get comfortable with that strapping you take it off and put a new one on and you put it on too tight there's nothing you can do about it when you go out like I mean but it was just his, his like his superstition you know what I mean so you know well, the, the only the only other ones in the real younger days was the was the lads who'd sneak a quick fag because they were tip. Yeah. Before they went. Yeah, yeah. Huh? Uh, right. the, the strangest that I've ever met, you know, Julian Lescott told me that he used to go to the same petrol station and fill up on the same pump yeah. before every game. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I I didn't do anything like that to be fair. I put all my left side on, so my socks and left foot in first, and left foot into my shorts first. Why I don't know. If I'm being quite honest, but Hefty. yeah. Okay, what was your pre-match meal? Oh, depending on times, I would normally just stick to pasta, me. 
not much sauce, pretty basic. Try and get that in there. I'd eat a lot more the day before, to be fair. Load up. Because load up, yeah, load up the day Load up before. the carbs. And then, um, obviously, it was a three o'clock kickoff. I'd have passed on. And if, if there was a half 12 game, I would honestly just have some scrambled egg. Yeah, nothing else in the morning. No toast with it or anything? Maybe a piece, depending how you feel. But I like to feel a bit light. But like I said, load up the night before. Right, a few Man United ones to finish. Will United win the Europa League this season? I've got a chance to, haven't they? So, I hope so. Um, I think they played really well in the competition. And, you know, getting that winning feeling back now, winning the, you know, the League Cup is... Uh, it's a good start, so the manager's got him in a, in a good headspace, so we'll, we'll see, but hopefully. I think I know what you're going to say for this next one, but which striker should United sign in this one? <laughs> Harry. Come on, Harry. He wants to come now. I don't, Harry Kane, I'd love to. I mean, we know what he can do in the Prem, so you're not, you're not sort of messing about there. I know he's um, a little bit older. He's probably going to cost a lot of money, but he's you know someone there now and to, to, to do the job straight off. Finally. Will Manchester United win the Premier League in the next three years? If they get a recap. <laughs> well, yeah. well, well, if they get Harry Kane, yeah, and maybe Jude. But yeah, I mean, it's. I, mean, I look at. I'm going to say I look at Arsenal this season. I never would have thought they'd be where they are at the moment. Um. So I don't see why not. I think the club will get sold. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I've heard the three bit of really that. He's close, it's saying now. He's getting yeah, not really close, so it looks like it is going to happen, doesn't it? I think it will, yeah. I think it will. And that means we can definitely get Harry. For <laughs> <that after this. laughs> no, Harry Katie, <laughs> I, please. Um, Wes Brown, thank you so much for coming in and joining us today. Uh, we really appreciate it. Sam? Thank you, well, thank thank you very much. As always, see you soon, pal. And thank you for joining us for another episode of No Tippy Tappy Football brought to you by William Hill. We'll be back next week. 